Many thought that virtual reality was going to be just another fad when Oculus Rift first appeared. That it would take the world over in one day, only to fade away into oblivion the next. Kind of like 3D TVs did. But this prediction couldn't have missed its mark more. The popularity of VR has only grown since its conception, and with tech giants such as Sony, Google and HTC investing into their own VR technologies for PCs, consoles and smartphones alike, it's safe to say that VR is here to stay. So because more and more people are deciding to try their hand at VR, we've made this buyer's guide to help. Over the course of this video, we'll be taking a look at the best VR headsets that money can buy in 2018. We'll be covering both those for casual entertainment as well as those for PC and console gaming, along with all of their pros and cons. So without any further ado, let's begin. The first type of VR headsets we'll be covering are smartphone VR headsets, also known as mobile VR. These devices use a smartphone as both their processing and display unit. They're not what most people usually imagine when they hear VR, but they've still managed to cut a sizable piece of the VR market cake for themselves, so we feel that it would be unjust to leave them out of the discussion. One of the reasons for their popularity is their price. Because they rely on the smartphone for processing and display, they're much cheaper than, say, the Oculus Rift. In fact, the first entry on our list is dirt cheap. We're talking, of course, about Google Cardboard. If you haven't heard about this product, then you may think it's a gimmick of some sort. But we assure you, this is not the case. If there's one company that needs no introduction, it's Google. It's pretty much on the front page of the internet. Sorry, Reddit. But take away the Google part of the name, and what you're left with is essentially what this headset is. A headset made of cardboard. It works by using two lenses in front of the user's eyes, which shows a displayed image in an immersive and responsive 3D environment. What's more, it comes with built-in NFC, which makes VR app activation almost instantaneous as soon as the phone is placed in a headset. It's ridiculous what Google has managed to do with so little but their innovation extended to the controls as well. You can control with the help of a circular magnet located on the side. This piece of metal would then interact with your phone's magnetometer and actually stimulate a button you can use. It will never match the functionality of the controllers that other VR headsets have, but it's still amazing nonetheless. Plus, it pretty much has universal smartphone support, so long as the phone runs on either Android 4.1, iOS 8.0 or higher and can physically fit into the headset. The fact that it's made out of cardboard is this VR headset's greatest strength since that's what allows it to be so affordable. But it is also a weakness because it's just about as uncomfortable to wear as you'd imagine having cardboard in your face would be. Still, its purpose is mostly to serve as a tech demo for people who want to see what all the VR fuss is about. So while it will get old after a while, it's still more than worth the price if you want to give this technology a try. Google Daydream View is our second entry on the list, and while it uses the same technology based on stereoscopic 3D through glass lenses and the smartphone app, it's still much closer to what you'd imagine a VR headset would and should be. Instead of cardboard, the exterior is made from a highly durable fabric that comes in white, grey and red. What's more, the inside of the headset has extensive padding to make it more comfortable. And naturally, it comes with more features the most important of which has got to be the remote that sports a touchpad and motion detection as well as a bunch of buttons. But one way in which it didn't improve on the cardboard was in regards to its compatibility. In order for a smartphone to work with the Daydream View, it will need to have a 1080p OLED screen with a 60Hz refresh rate and have it run on Android 7.0 Nougat or any newer version. The 1080p resolution isn't really a problem, but many high-end phones still use LCD displays. So while it's definitely a colossal improvement upon the cardboard, way fewer people will actually be able to use it. Samsung is one of the biggest names in Android manufacturing, and their Galaxy S series is one of the most popular flagship phones to use this operating system. So it came as no surprise when the Korean tech giant decided to launch their own VR headset, the Samsung Gear VR. Although this headset sports a rectangular exterior made of plastic that distinguishes it at first glance, it's actually rather similar to Google's Daydream View in many regards. It has excellent controls and even some buttons and a touchpad on the headset itself, so you don't even need the controller for everything. However, it has serious compatibility issues and that it's only officially compatible with some Samsung phones. Although users have reported successfully connecting phones outside the list to the headset, 
but not without rooting the device. In the end, the biggest selling point has got to be the fact that it uses contact from the Oculus Store instead of the Google Play Store, giving you more advanced games. Of course, this is offset by the fact that it's the most expensive mobile VR headset. But as things stand, the headset's own exclusivity is its biggest problem. Of course, if you're a gamer, then chances are you aren't as interested in mobile VR headsets as you are in desktop and console ones. That's why we decided to save the best for last. Gaming VR headsets are what some consider as true VR headsets. They're very high-tech products made to fully immerse you in digital worlds in ways that we could only dream about decades ago. And if we're talking about gaming VR headsets, then we simply have to begin with the Oculus Rift. After all, it's the device that started it all. The Rift is a VR headset that raised over $2 million in its Kickstarter campaign and single-handedly ushered in a new era for gaming. The Rift display uses OLED technology and is split into two separate screens, one for each eye. But what's more, it uses Samsung's Pentile technology to make an additional layer of subpixels. If you're not familiar with this, then all you need to know is that it's there to make the 2K resolution image even clearer and sharper. It has its own controllers for VR content and, in case you weren't sure, these controllers are stacked. But if you prefer a familiar setup, then Oculus has you covered because the Rift has official support for the Xbox One controller as well. However, for all of these merits, the Oculus Rift does have one flaw that can make or break your decision to buy it or not. It's not fully compatible with Steam VR. Sure, there's an Oculus Store, but most PC gamers are, by extension, Steam users and will have an extensive library of games and maybe even some VR ones. This isn't to say that you can't run the Rift on Steam VR. You actually can, but because it isn't officially supported, then there's just no guarantee that every game will work properly. But ultimately, it's an excellent VR headset, and best of all, it's very cost-effective because it now ships with two motion controllers and two sensors. No one could have ever predicted that HTC, a company that specializes in making smartphones, would go on to release the most advanced VR headset to date, the HTC Vive. This headset is the result of a collaboration between HTC and Valve. It's also referred to as Steam VR by many. The display is identical to that of the Rift, with two OLED displays and Pentile technology for better image fidelity. Unlike the Rift controllers, the Vive controllers use a highly functional trackpad instead of an analog stick, which we can't confidently say it's better, as it's more of a preference thing. But what is definitely better is the more accurate motion detection. The base station is not only more accurate, but also smaller. In the end, the main selling point is Steam VR. The headset was designed to function with Steam VR games, but the great thing about the Vive is that it can also play regular Steam games which are automatically adapted to VR with the help of Steam's theater mode. The only thing it doesn't have going for it is the price. Because even after some price cuts, it remains the most expensive VR headset out there. And the last entry on this list is the Sony PlayStation VR headset. For a while after its launch, this was the best value VR headset out there and it played a part in getting HTC and Oculus to drop their prices. But what makes Sony's headset more unique is that it's the first ever console compatible VR headset. It also stands out from the crowd visually, opting for a look that's distinguishable by the white highlights and blue LED lights. These aren't there just for the added visual flair though, because they're used by the PS camera for motion tracking by capturing their movement and position. Display-wise, it deviates from the competition a bit, offering only a single Full HD display instead of having a separate display for each eye. However, despite the lower overall resolution, it's actually still capable of producing sharp and clean images because it has a higher sub-pixel count. And when it comes to controls, you have more variety than ever with the DualShock 4, Sony Motion Controllers, and the more recent AIM controller. On the other hand, there are two things holding PSVR down. First, there's a limited PC compatibility. It is a PS4 accessory after all, so the only way to get it working on the PC would be with the help of a third-party software. We've made a whole video on the viability of PSVR for the PC, so check that out if you want to know more. But then there's also the fact that all the accessories are sold separately. So while it may be the cheapest gaming VR headset in itself, if you're planning on buying the controllers and don't already have a PS camera, it can actually end up being as expensive as the Oculus Rift. 
So now that you've seen the headset, you may be wondering which one is the best for you. So we've made a brief guide to help guide you through the buying process. First, you need to consider the limitations of your system. VR is very hardware demanding, so before you go investing hundreds of dollars into one of these, you should make sure you can actually run it. For smartphones, it's as easy as looking up the list of supported phone models for each headset. But for the PC, things aren't so clear cut. So here's what we recommend. You should have at least a 6th generation i5 CPU or a 1st generation Ryzen 5. At least an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 graphics card with 6GB of VRAM or higher. And when it comes to Radeon, this translates to the AMD Radeon RX 480 or better and at least 8GB of RAM. Software-wise, you should have a 64-bit version of Windows 7 or newer. Granted, the official minimum hardware requirements are lower than what we've listed, but if you want a proper VR experience instead of a bare-bones one, then it would be better to save up and upgrade your PC first before diving into virtual reality. When it comes to consoles, obviously the PSVR is still the only choice. It is compatible with all versions of PlayStation 4, including the original version and the Slim, although the Pro will inevitably offer better graphics. And finally, there's the matter of content. For mobile, you'll have to decide between the Oculus Store and the Google Play Store. At the moment, the Oculus Store has more and better VR games, but this is likely to change in the future. On the PC side of things, the choice comes down to the Oculus Store and Steam. Here, it is largely a matter of preference, although Steam does offer the added benefit of being able to run games in VR that weren't designed for it with minimal hassle. Finally, we've come to the grand finale, where we proclaim our choices for the best headset, one for mobile and one for gaming VR. Among the three entries we had for mobile VR, we feel that the Google Cardboard is the best. It's compatible with most phones and it has the best value. Mobile VR headsets are generally only good for some light entertainment and the Cardboard is more than good enough for this. With the gaming VR headsets, however, we went in the opposite direction and picked the most expensive one. The HTC Vive does have the best motion controls, but the thing that really sells it is the full Steam VR compatibility. Once again, it really is a matter of preference, but we feel that the Vive does objectively outshine the other two entries, if only by a split hair. And there you have it, a comprehensive buying guide for VR headsets. This should have you covered whether you're in the market for a mobile or a gaming VR headset. Also, you've probably noticed that we haven't mentioned any of the Windows Mixed Reality headsets in this buying guide, but rest assured, we will be covering them as well in a future video. So what did you think? Do you agree with our picks or did we misjudge something? We'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.